welcome to the channel. My name is Danny, and you're watching Dragonairs Club. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about bioactive setups for crested geckos. We're going to be making one ourselves from scratch. We're going to be making a really cool back piece to go into it as well. Um, we're also going to be including like cool plants that you can put in um, to really kind of make it pop a bit more. And then like lights. We're going to be talking about lights. There is going to be some other stuff thrown in as well, but you'll kind of see that as you uh, go through the video. But yeah, that's going to be in today's video. I hope you enjoy it guys, and let's get into it. Okay, so to get the ball rolling, you firstly want to measure out the dimensions of the back panel within your terrarium and cut a piece of durable board to size. Then, Start to design the overall look of the terrarium by placing large pieces of wood in a way that will allow the gecko to explore the full canvas. Once happy, it's time to bring out the expansion foam. You want to make sure that the foam is applied thick around the bases of any added wood to ensure they are held in place. Then, allow to dry for 48 hours prior to cutting out the foam. With the carving, I simply use a dull blade to allow for more natural and non-uniformed looking rocks. Carving the spray foam is probably one of the areas that tends to put people off attempting to make their own design. However, a simple and effective rule to follow is to try and follow the direction the foam is going in and aim to remove any of the smooth and shiny surfaces. This will help the overall design to look much more naturalistic. When I am happy with the overall carve design, I then cover the exposed foam in four thick layers of grout and allow to dry for one week prior to applying Mod Podge. I typically cover the back pieces in three thick layers of Mod Podge and allow each layer to dry prior to applying any further layers. To add more depth to the build, I decided to go over the backscape with some Reptile Safe water-based acrylic paint and simply used a sponge to dab the paint on the back piece in order to get the desired effect. In hindsight, I probably would have chosen a different colour to do this design, as the more I looked at it, the more I felt like I was creating some kind of alien meat corpse. Once the paint had dried, I then went back over the design with more Mod Podge. I then started to add sphagnum moss, which I applied to the areas of wet Mod Podge, which seemed to hold the moss quite nicely. Using moss in a terrarium build is amazing as it retains moisture and increases humidity which is great for species such as a crested gecko due to them requiring a humidity spike during the night. Once completed and happy with the design, allow this to dry prior to adding the back piece into the terrarium. Morning everybody, hope everyone's doing really well on this cold January morning. Um, so I am sat in my car as you can see at the moment. I'm just about to head off to a reptile shop, um, actually in Wales in the UK. And we are going to go pick up some isopods and springtails and some other bits and bobs. We might see what else, what else they've got. I'm a little bit of a cheeky buy but I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt that I actually will buy anything else. but. The main thing that we're going for is springtails and isopods um, to pop into our bioactive build for the crested gecko uh, terrarium. So I thought, why not bring you guys along? It could be fun, you know? So yeah, let's get going. Okay, so we just arrived at the reptile shop. I'm just gonna go on in, grab the bits that we need. So I'll catch you in a second. Hi guys, so I'm back from the shop. Um, basically I wasn't allowed to get any footage of it of uh, any of the stock that they have in there, unfortunately. Um, so I had a good chat with some of the staff, um, which is super lovely. Um, and they were like, basically, they've had so many problems before where people have gone in asking if they could film, they've done it, and it's basically just been to compare prices. So 
It's a massive shame because they have some amazing setups in there. There's like a massive tarantula setup that they've got. It's huge. And the way that they've done it just looked really, really cool. Um, I wouldn't have involved it in this footage, but it would have been epic for like later content because I am planning to move on to like tarantulas and stuff as well. Um, later on. Uh, they had loads of stuff though. There's like crocodile skinks, um, all different types of crested geckos, chameleons, different snakes, everything. And I wanted to show you guys a lot of the stuff they had in there, different tarantulas and yeah. Uh, so unfortunately wasn't allowed to get any footage. I don't know why I keep doing this with my hands. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, massive shame. But there we go. It is what it is. Uh, so just gonna head back home now. I've managed to grab all the bits that I needed regardless. The main thing that we went in for was the isopods and springtails and all that sort of stuff. So grabbed all of those. I'll show you guys those later. Um, I've got two different variations of isopods. Basically, I love isopods. <laughs> I've only got like four different varieties in my collection, but it's a very small collection, um, but I still enjoy looking after them. Um, I don't want loads, because yeah. obviously I don't want them. Um, as I said, Gutted I couldn't get you any footage because I really wanted to bring you guys in with me into the shop. That was the whole point of this, this whole trip um, today, so yeah, but there we go. Unfortunately, I didn't get to, but I'm going to head back now and we'll crack on with the Crusty Gecko video. So I'll catch you guys in a bit. See ya. If you're stuck in deciding whether to go bioactive or not, here are some pointers that may help. When I first started owning crested geckos some 12 years ago, my first setups were not bioactive, and it is only with time that I decided it was time to change. These days, I feel that it is much more uncommon to see geckos in non-bioactive setups, but there are certainly some people who feel this method is still the way to go. The benefits of non-bioactive setups mostly circulate around maintenance of the tank. You don't have to worry about trimming or replacing plants, ensuring the plants are thriving, keeping on top of watering the terrarium, or providing adequate UV light for the plants, which, although is relatively inexpensive, it is an additional cost for bioactive setups. However, on the flip side of this, non-bioactive tanks will, will require more spot cleaning, as one of the main benefits of introducing springtails and isopods into a bioactive enclosure is that they clean any droppings produced by the gecko. Bioactive setups typically are more aesthetically pleasing to look at and fun to create for herpers, who also have developed or have always had a love for plants, as you can play around with a wide range of hardy plants that typically thrive in areas where humidity is typically higher. One of my favourite parts of going bioactive is getting to shop around for beautiful and safe terrarium plants. For this build, the plants I chose to use include Phytonia, Gynura orantiaca, Plyblastus variegatus, and the Pachira aquatica, otherwise known as the money tree. Following on from siliconing the background in place and leaving to dry, it is then time to start adding the drainage layer. I placed a 2-3cm thick layer of pea shingle as my base layer before covering the full layer of shingle with drainage cloth to act as my drainage layer. I then started to apply the substrate which consists of cocoa fibre, sphagnum moss and a forest blend soil from my local reptile shop and sits at a depth required to comfortably cover the plant's roots. I also placed cork bark and dried leaves along the bottom of the terrarium. Okay, so here is the back piece. This is now in the terrarium. As you can see, I have gone ahead as well and put the substrate in, um, but it's no different to as I've already sort of explained with the different layers in there. Um, so we are going to put in our um, bioactive um, isopods as well into here. 
and then all we're gonna do right now is just start planting it up so I have already added a plant already I will be introducing like the list of all the plants that I've used in this terrarium um, for you guys so you can have a nice list of plants that are safe to use as well but as you can see there's like plenty of places naturalistic kind of places that this gecko can go into and hide and there's like different houses there's a nice big house up here as well he can hide within here um there's lots of like dark little places as well that he can go to so it's really cool right let's crack this on. here is probably one of my favorite ones it's called an Ad adiantum fragrance um doesn't look hardy at all but it actually really is uh, as long as it's kept well watered it's generally quite happy the leaves don't just sort of fall off his crested geckos are quite notorious for um destroying a lot of foliage so this is actually a really good one to use and what i love about it is that it's almost got like a bonsai-ish effect to it it's got those like lovely weeping leaves and it's just its structure is really nice so i'll be using this as well I absolutely love this plant. Um, I wish I could remember what it's actually called. I will research it and I will write it down here. Um, but it's so beautiful and it does really well. I thought it might be kind of delicate if I tried this with a previous terrarium and um, I wasn't really expecting it to last very long, but it's still going. And now it's literally in every single one of my terrariums, so I'm very pleased with it. Whenever I see it, I grab it. <laughs> so the crucial thing for crested geckos is lots and lots of foliage. They love being able to hide. They love having dark places and big leaves that they can drink lots of water off of. So plants like this are wonderful. They do really well. High coverage all throughout, from top to bottom. And next up, the springtails. God, there's loads of them in this. Wow, they're literally pinging all over the place. Alright, pop them in there. And last but not least, the isopods. Woo! These are the tropical grey variety. Literally just going to pop them in on that piece of wood. Alright, so last but not least, adding the crested gecko. So here he is, this is my boy. This is a lavender male. And let's pop him in. Yes, yeah, sweetie. Beautiful. Alright, so as you can see, just move my little watering can out of the way. I've been doing a lot of watering today. Um, these are the UV lights that I use uh, for my crested gecko terrariums to help the plants thrive. Um, I just wanted to show you guys what they look like. And the important thing is just making sure 
it's actually a pretty good idea to actually have these on before you do your planting because you can make sure then that where where you are planting the light the the plants are getting plenty of that UV light. Anything that typically won't get it or is starved of it won't thrive very well um, and may well just die. So to give everything the best chance, it's much more beneficial to get your UV lights first, then do your planting and, and just try and plant in those sort of most optimal UV areas. Um, it can be tricky, especially if you've got, you know, larger, more leafier, bushy plants. Um, which crested geckos typically really like. Um, so any smaller plants, such as your Fetonia, that's the pink one down here, um, just try and plant it in an area where it will potentially get enough UV to thrive. But just wanted to show you guys that.